Hey everyone, this is a quick video that I made for my students to talk about three different ways that we can finish off our shoe project that we have been making. The first method that I'm going to show is just oxide wash. The second method that I'm going to show is underglaze with oxide wash. And then the last method that I'm going to show is oxide wash with cone six glazes on top. So I give a little demo of each of these. If you haven't seen the playlist that I made for the shoes, click right here, look up above, and I'm going to put a little runner so you can uh, access the playlist if you want to of how we um, make the patterns, how we construct, how we clean, how we refine, and then lastly, how we will uh, finish the shoes. So drop me any questions that you might have below and please hit that subscribe button. And here are three examples of the three different methods that I'm going to be showing during this video. Now the first method is the easiest one that is applying iron oxide while it's bisque fired and wiping and then refiring. Now my students have used the iron oxide previously with our decorative little uh, coil pot samplers that we did. Remember that you want to mix the iron oxide up really really well. It can be applied with a paintbrush if you would like. Um, if you're trying to be real selective, you can do a paintbrush, but because I want it on the interior, I'm going to dip it. Now notice that I was holding it really just by the side, so I'm dipping half at a time. Um, and I'm trying to avoid getting my fingers in there if at all possible. And then I'm taking a squeezed out, rinsed out sponge, and I'm continuously wiping it as I am rinsing out the sponge. Now you never want to put your shoe under the water um, and you don't want the sponge to be super saturated and wet. It's just squeezed out. I keep rinsing it to help avoid smears and there we go. That's what I want. I want the texture to still capture the iron oxide and it's showing the texture. Now this then gets fired in a mature glaze firing. So that's the first method. Now the second method has a little bit of moderate difficulty. That's using underglaze with iron oxide. Now my students have also used underglaze previously with our Scrofito pots, but this time we are applying it to bisque fired shoes. Now these shoes are bisque fired and uh, when we apply it you can use a small little brush to try to get in there among the laces and everything. Note I am not going to be actually applying any glaze to the laces themselves. The glaze is just on the shoe body. Um, if I do get underglaze on the laces, I'm going to end up by taking a sponge and sponging that off a little bit just to uh, clean those laces off. And again, this is a moderate difficulty because I'm trying to avoid the laces. I'm applying three to five coats. If you want it a little bit more sparse and thin where you can see through it, you could do two. Underglaze then gets bisque fired for the second time and then after the underglaze is bisque fired we are going to apply the iron oxide again. You could either brush it and I do have it in a small jar as I was showing it or you can dip it just like I did on the boot and again sponge it with a clean rinsed out sponge as you go and then you can see that you get this great iron oxide detail in the textures and then that gets fired to a mature glaze firing temperature. Now the third method is the most skilled method and that is using iron oxide with glazes. So I go ahead and I apply the iron oxide just like I did on the boot and just like I did on the, uh, the shoe that had the underglaze on it. But now the key difference is this time I'm just going to bisque fire the iron oxide again because I do want to put glazes on top of it. I want to stabilize the iron oxide prior to putting the glazes on it. If I went ahead and put the glazes on right now, it would start to smear. So that gets bisque fired again. And now that it's been bisque fired, you can see it kind of... Um, uh, made the iron oxide just a little bit more muted and um, now this is ready to receive the glazes and my class is using the cone 6 coyote glazes um, these are glazes that are great for brushing and dipping but in our case we're going to be brushing or perhaps using a bulb syringe for the application the brushes uh, 
can be utilized just brushing three coats uh, when you're brushing. If you use a bulb syringe, you use one. And we learned all about that on the little box sampler. And as I do the glaze here, I do want to be mindful of the little details of the laces. If I, you know, got maybe the orange on the laces, I want to wipe that off before I actually apply the glaze for the laces. Um, you don't want to just sloppily apply this uh, one over another. It will smear during the firing. So uh, here I'm just doing the sole. Now notice the sole already has iron oxide in there. So it's really going to help give depth to that white glaze. It's not going to be a flat white. Uh, I do need to then sponge off any of the glaze that's on the very bottom because of course it would stick in the kiln if it weren't sponged off. So the sponging is going to be uh, very important and then that gets glaze fired to the cone six. So all of these were fired to cone six firing. You can see how the oxide is just fantastic. It enhances it. The oxide with the regular cone six glazes is terrific. Um, and with the underglaze, it has that really nice matte surface. And here's the sole of that shoe. And again, just a little detail there. So you can see how the oxide uh, really just brought out the detail of the, the stitching, the laces, and all that. It's uh, really fun, so do have fun when you experiment uh, with yours and uh, take your time and do a nice job. <laughs>